Hi! <laughs> Welcome to the Bat Zone and happy Halloween! At the Bat Zone here in Pontiac, Michigan, we are hanging out with our vampire bat colony. So a colony is a group of bats and we're hanging out with our common vampire bats. These are Desmodus rotundus. Uh, this is the common vampire bat. You find these in Mexico, Central, and some of South America. Not here in Michigan. Now vampire bats get a really bad rap and they're a great prop for Halloween. But there are some super interesting things about vampire bats that you might not know. And we're gonna introduce you to those facts today. Well, that's an old myth. And um, they don't suck blood. Vampire bats will only feed on humans if there's no other animal within a certain radius. Um, most often, they feed from cows, pigs, chickens, um, and donkeys, and other agricultural um, animals. Now, they don't suck blood. They, they um, only take a little nibble out of the ankle of whatever host animal they're feeding from, and they drink up or lap up like a kitten. They only lap up about a tablespoon of blood before they take off for the rest of the night. Uh, that doesn't kill the animal. Um, occasionally, just like any other mammals that come in contact with each other, they can spread disease back and forth, but that goes both ways, cows to bats and bats to cows. Um, but very often, they just feed from their host and take off for the night. Vampire bats have heat-sensing receptors on their face, so they can find the blood very quickly. They can identify where that vein is, take a little nibble, and feed from that animal. Now those heat sensing receptors are in those folds of their, of their nose. I'll pick up one of these guys and show you up close in just a second, but I think you might be able to see right there the folds around their nose. So they use those heat sensing receptors to find the, the vein very quickly. It's super important to be adapted to eat quickly when you're a vampire bat so that you don't become bat pancake when you're feeding from large cows or donkeys. They can also eat very quickly because they have a special protein in their saliva. Vampire bats' saliva holds a protein called an anticoagulant. You might recognize that word from uh, blood thinners that we take as medications. So aspirin and that bats have in their saliva is super awesome. It could actually save your life one day. When you take anticoagulants like aspirin, your brain will keep that, those, um, that medication from actually passing the blood-brain barrier into your brain. So it just takes care of aches and pains in the rest of your body. But the anticoagulant found in bat saliva can actually pass that blood-brain barrier. So if you know somebody who suffers from a stroke, that's um, blood clotting in your brain. The vampire bat anticoagulant is specialized that they can get up there and get rid of that clot in your brain. So now pharmaceutical companies are making a, um, an anticoagulant for stroke victims. I think they're calling it something silly like Draculin. But that um, you could take, if you ever suffer from a stroke, you could take that Draculin and that's from the vampire bats anticoagulant in their saliva, that protein that we find, and they could possibly save your life one day. So vampire bats are not found up here in North America. They're found in Mexico and Central and South America. They live in abundance near big cattle farms, and they feed from those cattle every single night. Now, once they find a good meal, they actually can go back to the same cow each and every night and feed from that blood. Um, the way that they can identify that individual cow is by using their echolocation and their sensory receptors to be able to find an individual cow based on their individual breathing pattern. So just by listening to the breathing of an entire field filled with cattle, they can go back to the same cow every single night to feed. So that's super awesome. Here's something that you might not know. This is not spooky at all. Vampire bats live in harems, which means that there's usually a male and a few females. And the females have best friends or feeding partners. And so if one female doesn't get enough blood one night in order to survive, their friend will actually regurgitate or throw up half of their blood meal and share it with their best friend. How sweet is that? And so they don't go and starve. And so we have these, um, these pairs of females that will share and take care of each other. 
But if one female takes advantage of another female, then they're gonna have to find a new best friend. They don't stand for that. So we're just starting to learn about all these super cool behaviors that, that vampire bats have. Vampire bats do use echolocation. That's a way for bats to find their way around in the dark. If you've ever heard that bats are blind, or you've ever heard anybody say, I'm as blind as a bat, that's an old wives' tale. Bats aren't blind, they can see with their eyes, but when there's no light information to enter their eyes in order to make a picture in their brain, they can use sound information instead. So they use high frequency clicking sounds or chirping sounds, and those sound waves bounce off of everything in their environment. It goes back to their ears, their ears collect all that sound information and make a picture just like our eyes make with light information. So bats can see in two different ways. When given the option, bats will use both their eyesight and their echolocation at the same time in order to get the most comprehensive vision that they can. And that's how they navigate their way around in the dark and how they find their food. Vampire bats like this are common vampire bats. There's another species of bat that really likes to feed from chickens. And if you have chickens, you might know that they have a brooding patch on their bellies. And when their chicks need warmth or protection, they saddle up to mom and they snuggle into that brooding patch. And the mom instinctually puffs up them. And so they'll sneak up to a sleeping hen and they'll climb up to their belly and they'll snuggle into that brooding patch just like the chicks do. And the mom instinctually puffs up and pulls the vampire bat in closer to where there are nice big veins on their legs. And so they're able to feed and get out of there super fast before the, chi before the, the hen really realizes what's happening. Here at the bat, at the bat zone, we feed our bats um, uh, cow's milk. We get it from an organic butcher who donates it. Usually during the butchering process, the, the blood goes down the drain. But in this case, we found a really nice butcher who likes to help our bats out. So they're able to, um, to, uh, to store it for us. They put an anticoagulant in it so it doesn't clot up. And we feed it to them in this, um, in this modified bird feeder. This imitates their natural uh, feeding behavior because they do feed on the ground. And they're able to come up and this imitates that big vein that they would be looking for in a cow's ankle. And so they're able to come up and feed from the troughs. We give them plenty of food because sometimes vampire bats get, um, get competitive about who gets to eat first. They have a pecking order so the big biggest, baddest bats get to eat first. And so we give them plenty of food so that there's no fighting. You can see down here, we have one of our bats on the ground. Oh, I just scared him. <laughs> we have, oh, there's a couple right there. Uh, vampire bats are some of the, the uh, one of the four um, species that can actually move around on the ground. Usually bats are super awkward when they're moving around terrestrially or on the ground, but vampire bats have extra special long thumbs and more um, substantial hind limbs or back legs and hips, and that helps them to move around on the ground, which is, this really helps to um, be able to move around quickly on the ground so that they can get out of there before they become that fat pancake. Now, I'm going to try to catch one of these bats so that you can see them up nice and close. And I just happened to get a little guy here. Now, you can take a peek at their super cool faces. Vampire bats are part of a family of bats called the Phyllostomidae family, and each one of them have specialized nose structures to either help them to navigate in the dark while they're eating, or in this case, this is to hold all those um, heat receptors. And so you can see there's more surface area or more skin for those receptors to be underneath and that helps them to find their blood. So you can see they're super cute little faces. You can tell they're echolocating bats because they have smaller eyes and big goofy ears. <laughs> that guy. And you can also see, now that I have them up close, you can see this extra special long thumb. That's what helps them to uh, locomote uh, uh, terrestrially or run around on the ground. It's unique to bats. Normally, when bats are on the ground, they look super awkward, and they do something like a, uh, like a butterfly stroke if, if you're swimming. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not very efficient or quick. You can see that these bats are mammals. You can see that they have fur or hair. They do give birth to live babies. They don't lay eggs. 
They feed their babies milk before they start to drink blood. Once vampire bats are fully grown, they don't need to drink water, they don't eat meat, they don't eat fruit or vegetables. They can survive solely on that blood meal that they get every night. They also have, if you can take a peek in their lower lip, they have a little cleft in their lower lip. Can you see that? There's that little lip there. Now, when they put their tongue on top of that little cleft in their lip, it makes a capillary action. So just like capillaries in our body or tiny little tubes that we pick up blood with, what it does is it's a small enough um, tube that once you press it to a liquid, the liquid will automatically slurp up into that straw. Same thing with their mouths. They can make that capillary action using that lip and their tongue so that the blood is slurped up super quickly while they're eating. Again, it's super important to have all these adaptations to eat quickly because they feed from hosts that are much, much larger than they are. Many people are afraid of bats because of the risk of rabies. Bats, um, less than half of 1% of bats actually carry rabies, and the kind of rabies that they get is paralytic, which means that they're paralyzed soon after they're infected. So it actually, it debilitates them and they die pretty quickly. There's much less of a chance of getting rabies from a bat than some other animals that are larger that can carry around that virus for a longer time. In Michigan, the biggest risk of, of rabies comes from skunks because they're usually around our neighborhoods and we come in contact with them more often. Bats get a bad rap, but they're actually super sweet and very, very important to all of the environments that we find them in. What is the most bizarre myth you've personally heard about vampire bats? About vampire bats? That you turn into a vampire after they bite you. And obviously that's not true. That's an old folklore. Actually, vampire bats um, were named after, um, after Dracula was invented. So actually the books about Dracula were written way before um, the uh, Eastern cultures knew about um, uh, knew about vampire bats. So we actually named them after the, um, the uh, characters in books and not vice versa. Do the vampire bats ever go on the road for the different events or is it just special occasions because they're most sensitive? Oh, they are very sensitive. We take our vampire bats out very infrequently. The reason for that is um, when we reintroduce them, we have to do that slowly. So they need to be in a secondary uh, containment and then um, be introduced back to the colony slowly. Once they've been once they've been out of their colony and they're reintroduced, they get um, they get a little aggressive with each other, and and um, and they have to re reestablish themselves in that colony when they come back. So um, because of their strong bonding as well, it makes them uncomfortable being separated from their friends and family that they usually hang out with. So it does stress them out. They're also much more um, sensitive to light and noise than some other species that are used to living around humans. And so, um, so yeah, we don't take them out very often. And when we do reintroduce them, we're very careful to make sure that that's a slow process. And so it is infrequent. Yeah, absolutely. How many vampire bats do you have at the bat zone? How much blood do you have to supply for them on a weekly basis? Sure. So, um, so right now we have, I think we have 71 vampire bats in here right now. Um, and uh, this is not a, breeding, uh, not a breeding program in here. We don't breed any of our animals. Uh, we are a rescue facility, so any of the animals that come here are coming to us because they're on their last leg. They have nowhere else to go. And so we want to make sure that we save room for bats that really need a place to go and that we're not just um, breeding just to breed. Um, so to answer your question, uh, we do feed them about a liter of blood every day. So you can see here, this is their dinner. They get four vials of blood in the morning or four um, tubes of blood in the morning just for a snack. And then right around two o'clock, they get fed their full meal. So this is about as much blood as they get every day. They get four more vials in the morning. So it's about a liter a day. When we do collect it from the butcher, we put it in individual containers and put it in the freezer and we just pull out what we need each day, thaw it out, and then we bring it up to um, body temperature and then we feed them in these tubes.
Do the vampire bats living at the bat zone have names like the fruit bats do? They do. They do have names. I don't remember all of them because there's so many, but we do have names for them, absolutely. <laughs> I read an article that vampire bats might move northward into Texas and Florida as the climate warms in the United States. Have you in, have, do you have any information on this? So um, we haven't seen that uh, so far yet. Uh, there's been one or two cases of vampire bats in Texas, but we think that they were just young bats that got lost. We don't think that there's um, that that movement has started yet. Um, there's no evidence, and we can probably model that that's going to happen, but there's no way to really tell for sure. But if you were to ask me personally for my opinion, I think there will probably be changes in all of the ranges of bats. We're already starting to see that in North America, where ranges of bats are moving west where they weren't before. So, so yes, that's very possible that that could happen, that they could move up into Texas. OBC has told us that vampire bats are very sensitive to change. Were there any problems with relocating the vampire bats to the new Pontiac location in July? Oh, so they did really well. We brought them over um, uh, slowly, and we made sure that they were nice and warm when they came over. We did it quickly. Um, we got them over here quickly and then slowly adapted them into their new environment. Um, so they... Uh, so uh, they did okay. I don't. We didn't lose any bats. None of them really stressed out. We didn't have any. Um, we had one that was kind of lethargic, but it was just because he didn't eat for that day. Once he had his blood meal the next morning, he was perfectly fine and jumped right back into it. So no, very very little problems. Yeah, they they did a really good job. <laughs> Where is the largest colony of vampire bats, and how many are there? Oh, you know what? I don't know that answer. I would have to look that up. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for all those questions. Everybody have a happy and safe Halloween. And if you do want to visit us here in Pontiac, Michigan, we are open to the public for tours on Friday nights, Saturdays, and Sunday mornings. Uh, oh, sorry, Sunday afternoons. So if you wanted to come visit our new location and see this awesome new building that we're in, um, you can find all the information on our website at batconservation.org or on our Facebook page. Thank you so much and have a great holiday. Happy Halloween, everyone! <laughs>